Yes. Hi everyone. Welcome to another session. Here uh, we are going to now create the database uh, with the help of our entity classes. So as you know, in last session we have created this uh, DB context class along with the user class. So user class is for our table structure. DB context is for our database structure. Now from these two classes, I just wanted to create a new database so that uh, we can store the data into it uh, with the help of entity framework code first approach. Now uh, let's first of all decide this connection string for uh, our application, right? Uh, so before uh, creating a new database, we need the connection string. So for that, uh, let's uh, first of all open the SSMS. So SSMS means uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, you will need this uh, for uh, in order to see the database name, in order to see the tables available in the database. And if you open the table, you can also see the data available in the database. So this is for database uh, explorer. Okay. You can use this for seeing your data into available into the database. Now let me check if I'm having any other users. So we can use that. If I connect with the Windows user, I think uh, we can use this one only. No problem. Okay. Let me delete this existing database. I don't require that now okay yeah so you can see uh, i have one database server this one in this database server uh, i just wanted to create a new database which is uh, for our own application now uh, first of all if uh, there are some new candidates here they can understand how we can install this ssms so you can just go to the google type install sql server okay once you go to the sql server it will ask you to install SQL Server along with the Management Studio. You can just install the SQL Server and then uh, further you can download the Management Studio. Once you download that, here uh, server name will be your computer name. You can select authentication is Windows authentication, click on connect. Once you click on the connect, uh, it will open uh, this explorer here in the object explorer. And here you can see all databases available into your server. So there is no database as of now, right? I wanted to create the database from the code. So for that, I'll need to configure my connection string. So where I need to configure that connection string in the app setting.json file. Okay. In this file, as a first node uh, here, you can just add connection string. Connection strings. Okay. In that, you can add one more node like default connection. Default connection means this will be your primary database connection. So connection string can be server is equal to, uh, you can use your server name. What was the server name? Okay. Uh, server name is, let's say this one, your computer name. So you can use this computer name here and mention here. Okay. This is your server name. Now database name, what database name you want to keep? I wanted to keep like uh, techno talent to track DB. Okay. So we can use database is equal to talent to track DB like this. Okay. And now uh, further you can add your uh, connection information. Like if it is uh, in, uh, like password security, username and password, you can mention that otherwise there is no password required. You don't need to mention it. Just mention here trusted connection is equal to true. Okay. And then this way uh, it will allow you to connect with the database over the HTTP protocol. You don't have to use uh, that one HTTPS. Okay. That is not mandatory. Okay. So this is your connection string. We have just decided here. Now, next thing is I wanted to create uh, some uh, data, uh, create a databases with the help of div context file. So uh, you will have to go to the program.cs file first. Okay. Program.cs file. In this file, we need to add some middlewares. Okay. Why we need to add middlewares? Because not middleware, we need to in, uh, register some dependencies for the db context file. Why we require that? Because uh, that dependent by using that dependency, we can get the instance of db context class into any service any repositories so that's why first of all we need to register the dependency so here uh, add your service container i can register the dependencies here like so builder 
builder dot services dot add db context okay this one add db context and this is your here you can mention your app, app, uh, context file name and that's it now this middleware is available inside the entity framework core package so you will have to add that package here okay let me check if we install any uh entity primo core package here no right so in api project also you will have to first of all install entity framework package so go to right click manage nuget package browse here find this core package and then install it okay click on it click on install so this way uh, you will get an access of all the inbuilt classes and functionality available inside the entity primo class Okay. So we have just installed this package core. Now we need some more package like we need tools as well. Okay. So entity framework core dot tools. You can use that click on install. Click on accept. So this way, these two packages is now installed. There is one more package we need to install that is entity framework core dot SQL server. Okay, SQL server, this one. Click on that, install it. Okay, now you can see the error for this DB context is now, uh, it is now identical. Okay, it is not available because we have installed the required packages where this class was available. Now this middleware is available. In this uh, angle bracket, we'll need to mention our DB context file name. What is the DB context file name? It is talento track DB context. So you can just add that here talento track. Okay underscore let me check the class name it should not okay underscore db context this one now you can see there is an error why error because in the api project we do not have a reference of the dao project this class is available inside the dao and we are working inside the api project right this app program.cs is available under the api project so we need to add the reference of this project into the api project then only we can access that okay so how we can add the reference just right click here in the suggestions you can see add the reference to talented track DAO. yes i wanted to do that so i will click on this once i click on this it will add the reference and then now this class is identical to this project as well okay here you can mention options okay then this arrow and we need to configure the SQL server database. How we can configure that by using the options dot use SQL server, use SQL server. And here we need to pass the connection string. That's it. Okay. Now you will, uh, there will, there will be a question like how we can pass the connection string into this function. Okay, from where I can get that, right? Because connection string is available inside the app setting.json. I wanted to read this connection string from here and I wanted to pass to this function. How I can get that? So I need one configuration object. Okay, so let me check if there is any configuration object available. We need to read the app settings.json file first and then only we can read the values from that file. So let me check. Yeah, so there is a value, uh, there is a way. What we can do? 
we can do like this. So we are having this builder, right? So from the builder, we can get configuration. Okay. Dot get value. Get value. And here value will be come in the string format. So that's why this string. And here we can mention the path of that value. So path is like it is available inside. Where is that? Inside connection strings. Then colon. And then default connection like that. So you got the connection string value from the app settings file. So this is how you can use that. Okay. So this is the way we can read the configuration from the configuration file. Okay. Another way is like if you don't want to use get value function, you can use like this in curly uh, this one square bracket. You can directly mention the key and value. So it is available inside connections object inside that connection strings. We are having a default connection. Whatever value we are having in the default connection, I just wanted to retrieve that. And once I got that value, I wanted to pass that connection string as a part as a parameter to the use SQL server function. This function is a part of the entity framework. So this is the basic configuration we need to do in order to work with the entity framework. So in the .NET core, in the app program settings files, basically we will use this settings file in order to register the dependencies as well as register the middlewares. Okay. So this dependency is why we need to register because uh, wherever I require the object of the database context file class, I can get that. And whenever I will get that object, that should be object of the SQL server database only. And here is the connection string. So this complication we need to do inside this project first. So it will be only one time. If you run the project, it will only run one time and later it won't run again and again. Uh, you can always get the object in the controller or services because of this complication. Okay. Now let's move on. So what we did as of now, we have just set up the dependency of our DB context file in the program.cs. Now we can run the migration. Before that, I just wanted to see uh, the DB context class once again. So if I go to the DB context class, you can see there is one table we have registered. Also, I think uh, we can add one more constructor uh, that requires like public, then our DB context class name. Because by using this constructor, we will initialize the settings mentioned in the program.cs to the base class. Who is the base class here? Base class is DB context. So this DB context is the base class of our current DB context and this is from the entity framework. We need to initialize some configuration there as well. So how we can do that? We'll do the parameterized constructor like DB context option. Options. Then we will mention our DB context file name here. That is our talent to track DB context. Okay. And here we will have one options object. Like this. Inside this, we'll have to initialize the parameters to the base class. So we'll do like this. So there is a base keyword in C sharp in order to call the constructor of the parameterized, sorry, sorry, call the parameterized constructor of the base class. So by using the base class, we can just pass these parameters to the parameterized constructor of the base class like this. And that's it. Okay. I think we are good to go. Now we can create the database. Now you can see we do not have any database here. If I right click refresh here, no database, right? I wanted to create the database. So I will go to the tools, then command line arguments here. You can choose, sorry, uh, NuGet package manager. Click on the package manager console. Once you reach here, okay. here what we can do we can run one command so there is a command command is first of all add space sorry hyphen migration and we can add initial initial create initial create means create my new database okay migration means what i will tell you 
so migration means uh, every time whenever you want to let's say uh, change your database structure like i have created one database then later i have created one more table that is let's say student table so obviously that table should be get created in the database again so every change for the database is nothing but your one migration command okay so this is my first time to create database so that's why i am giving a name to initial create okay and if i hit this command then it will create one migration folder into your api project now let's wait for it it is running in the background Okay, so it started the build, build succeeded, but your target project talent to track API doesn't match your migration assembly. Talent to track DAO, either change your target project or change your migration assembly. Change your migration assembly by, okay. It is by default. Okay, so this error is because uh, we are having the db context file. Inside this project, DAO project, now we are doing the migration inside the API project. So that's the problem. So let's do one thing. Instead of changing the migration assembly, we will just change the project here. Let's select the DAO and now run the migration command. Okay. This time it should work. Okay, you can see uh, it has created one migration folder here. You can see this one. So this is in DAO project now. In migration folder, you will see the initial create file. So this file will actually has all the things related to the current database schema. Like it will create one table user table. This table will have one ID column, which will have the integer value. Identity one of one means it will be auto incremental and the primary key of the table. First name is your Enverker max, last name is Enverker max, and uh, this date time will be date time. This created by ID will be ID. Okay, so this way we can it will convert your C sharp code into the SQL DDL query and then it will generate the table into the database. Okay, now we got the migration file. Now we can update the database okay so in order to update the database you can fire this command update dash database and click on enter so this way whatever migration you have generated you can verify your file first whether it will go it will going to create all the table structure everything as per your requirement or not if yes then only uh you can just click on uh call the update database command so that way it will only make these many changes to your database now what error is this a connection was successfully established with the server but then error occurred during the login process it means this ssl provider is not working so we need to make some changes to your connection string that is trusted connection true and there is one more i think let me copy the error so we can get the correct one correct solution okay this is very generic error actually you will always get if you are working with the http protocol and trying to connect with the database you will have to add this trusted certificate true into your connection string and that's it okay i think we already added that i thought that but it was not certificate it was just connection so that's the problem so you can add trust server certificate true and now if you again run this migration like update database command it will create your database okay you can see done 
Now done means if you go to your database, now right click and refresh this one, you will see one database talent to track TV. Okay. If you open this database tables, you will see one more table that is your user table. Okay. And now if you open your user table columns, you can see these many column automatically got generated. That is ID, first name, last name, email, contact number, role, created date, created updated date, created by and updated by. So this is how we can generate the database automatically by using the entity framework. Okay. There is no single line of change, no single character of change at the database level. You can see I haven't even created the database through the SSMS. Everything we have done through the code only. So that's why we used to call it as a code first approach of the entity framework. Okay. I will pause here and we'll uh, discuss the next things in the next session. Thank you.